um, how are you? Most people answer that question with fine or good. But obviously it's not always fine, and it's usually not even that good. (laughs) This is a podcast that asks people to be honest about their pain. To just be honest about how they really feel. About the hard parts of life. And guess what? It's complicated. I'm Nora McNerney. And this is terrible. Thanks for asking. Hello. Hi. Happy-ish holidays, everybody. Uh, Thank you for joining me tonight for our very first ever TTFA podcast live stream and the first ever time that we've done our Happy-ish holidays episodes as a live event. I love, love, love being able to, by the way, if you're like, what is she doing down there? There's a dog. Okay, everyone relax. (laughs) Okay. And she's she needs to be exactly right here. She's clearly in charge of this whole joint. So Happy Holidays is one of my favorite episodes that we do every year at Terrible Thanks for Asking. I also really, really love getting to go and do live shows and meet everybody and see everybody. And for some reason in 2020, we just couldn't pull it together. Okay, it, it's it, it's it's really just our own fault and our own personal shortcomings that we were able to pull together a live tour for you. We have nothing and nobody else to blame but ourselves. But guess what? Thanks to you, our sponsor, Shutterfly, we are able to do this event, this live stream event here with you from my living room to wherever you are. Uh, hopefully you are wearing something comfy, wearing something cozy, perhaps even your own wedding dress from nine years ago that absolutely refuses to zip. Again, for reasons no one could possibly understand or explain. But thanks to Shutterfly, we were able to do this for zero dollars. That is a a big deal because I know sometimes, you know, you're in in the year of of Zoom uh, 2020, you're like, oh my God, how hard can it be to stream something? I would like you to know it's actually incredibly hard for a person who today shut a car door on her own leg. Okay, but it's much easier because so many people are helping me and it is an international affair. I can say that because we do have a Canadian on the team, at least one Canadian. We have Sonia. Sonia, can you pop up and say hi? She's directing this whole thing from Toronto. Okay, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We have Crystal in California, the fanciest of all the states. We have Marcel Malikibu in St. Paul, Minnesota, the superior of the Twin Cities. I said it, okay? I did that. And and then and then we have all of you. And I know from my DMs that some of you are also from Canada. One person is staying up, allegedly, allegedly, um, until like 3 a.m. in South Africa. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, but it's pretty incredible. It's so amazing to have a, a, a partner who's willing to help us do this and bring it to you. So thank you, Shutterfly, for being that partner to us and for understanding what we do at this show. If you've never been to a terrible thanks for asking live show before, um, I mean, it, it it's a live show. Um, I I do the thing and then you just watch it. When we call this live stream show interactive, um, you know, people are like, oh my God, are you going to call on me? Absolutely not. I cannot see you except for the three people who are watching in the bathroom. That's just disinfect your phone. And that's all I ask. But um, it's interactive if you are watching on happyishholidays.com. That is the microsite where the Stage 10 platform allows you to be able to type in comments that like, I can see and respond to you. That's where we have exclusive merchandise happening this evening only, special Happyish Holidays merchandise. It's really just, you know, it's really, it's just really where the party is. So, I mean, the party is everywhere. That's what I'm saying. So I've promised a lot with this live show, right? I have promised you joy. I have promised you uh, happiness. I've promised you a tortoise. He's here. He's here. Uh, For people who don't follow me on Instagram, this tortoise's name is Cuteness. Um, He is currently only a couple months old. 
Uh, he weighs six ounces, weigh him every day. He's, he's growing, big guy, big guy, eats a, like half a head of romaine every day. Healthy, healthy as a tortoise. And uh, he will live to be 80 years old. <laughs> so really he is a gift for my great grandchildren. Lucky them, lucky them. They're going to inherit a, a 170 pound tortoise. And, uh, and, and that's all because I work in public radio. <laughs> So I promised you a tortoise. I delivered on that. I, 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 I'm very into um, over-promising and over-delivering. Okay. It's a, it's a one-two combo right there. So um, if you are watching on social media and you want to be able to buy the merch, if you want to be able to leave comments, you're just want to, you're going to want to go to happyishholidays.com. So why are we doing this? We have known um, forever that the holidays are a complicated time for a lot of people. And they always have been. Since the dawn of time, it has just been a lot of conflicting emotions. We have um, Honda days. Uh, that's, I mean, it's right around the corner. Um, some of us celebrate Toyotathon. And uh, the wealthier among us, and you know exactly who you are, lucky you, because you're celebrating the Lexus December to remember. And I do hope someday to have the kind of lifestyle where I wake up to an SUV with a bow on it. My mother-in-law got that dream once and why can't I, all right? So the point is that uh, things are complicated, okay? It, sometimes this, this season of joy is not just joyful. Some of our fondest Christmas memories are, you know, eating Christmas Eve dinner at Hardee's because dad's girlfriend broke up with him and uh, mom wasn't going to take him back. Some of us remember the holidays mostly for explosive arguments with our Uncle Rick, who uh, everyone knows that he cheated at the game of life. He cheated at the board game of life and he cheated at just like the game of life, which I don't know if anyone's played that recently. Um, one of my children tried to buy it as as like an iPad game, and I was like, "It's the, it's the worst game, kid." Okay, you know what you're gonna end up with? You're gonna end up with a broken down station wagon and like and a shack. All right, that's what's gonna happen. And guess what? Like, there's already an immersive experience called life, and uh, it's, I mean, at least it's better than the board game. <laughs> All right, <laughs> at least it's better than the board game. So. For some of us, um, the holidays are actually a very magical time. This is something that we've been looking forward to for, you know, 300 and, and uh, I can't do that math. We've been looking forward to it since the last holiday season, okay? Because we grew up in a family that's emotionally literate and, and kind to one another. And if that's you, um, I'm so sorry. That must have been a really tough loss this year. Man, darn it. Oh, geez, hate when that happens. I hate when a pandemic ruins like an otherwise functional family. You just, it, it happens every hundred years or so and every time just, oh God. So a terrible thanks for asking is usually a, it's usually a podcast. That's what it is. It's a podcast where we ask people to be honest about, about how things are. Okay. We, we, we believe in not trying to bright side people, not trying to make them search for a happy lining, but tonight, um, we are going to force some happiness. All right. In the, in honor of my late father, Stephen John McInerney, I see all of you, you are going to have a good time tonight. Okay. Gosh, darn it. That is my literal father. And that is something he would threaten you with. He would literally threaten you with a good time. And he would be like, you better have fun or I will turn this sensible sedan right around. I'll do it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. My dad would want to remind you that, you know, you invested $0 in this evening and, uh, and you should get your money's worth. How about that? So we're a podcast that believes in both and. Two things can be true at once, and they usually are. And we know that even hard years, even the worst year of your life, you find bright spots. Even hard years are worth documenting. They're worth remembering. They are worth marking in some way. I sit before you in my wedding dress from 2011. Um, this is my wedding anniversary. I would have been married for nine years. This is also the six-year anniversary of Aaron's funeral. It is also a night where I get to show up and be with all of you. It is all of these things. And that is why I'm wearing a wedding dress that it is, I bent over to get the dog right before we went on and the dress split up the back. 
it's split up the back. It has not been worn in nine years. And all I can think is that something happened, like it must have shrunk in some strange way, because I do feel like I, I've not changed in the past nine years in, in, in any physical way, at least, right? I don't know. Also, yes, I wore red to my wedding. Why? Because it was the only dress that showed up with like three day shipping. And also I wore red because I was like, well, I can wear this dress again, but I wasn't planning to wear this dress again. I was planning to return it. The tags are still inside. I was planning to return this dress, but I was so sweaty at our wedding. And now keeping my arms down for the remainder of the evening, by the way, just they're locked down. This is how we sit now that my husband was like, you, you can't, you, you can't return it. There's not a store in the world that would honor um, honor that return policy. But yet I left the tags in it. I love to keep hope alive, okay? And I always thought, oh, if it's red, I'll wear it again. However, I do not have the kind of lifestyle where I'm invited to parties of any kind, let alone a, a fancy party. That just doesn't happen for me. So I made my own. I made my own. I put up two Christmas trees, okay? These are fake candles. I mean, I'm really a... Uh, really live in the lifestyle. But tonight is essentially about, um, about happiness. It is about escape. It is about acknowledging that outside of whatever room you are in, outside of my you know, living room that is also our dining room and our kitchen, um, there is reality. Okay, we are all carrying something into this evening and maybe we've been carrying it for a very long time and maybe it just got dropped on us. But for the next hour or so, I'm notoriously unreliable with time, we're gonna set it down, okay? We're just going to set it down and hang out together. So I am, uh, I'm a Christmas baby um, not exactly on Christmas, which actually probably would have been better than when I was born, which is three days after Christmas. My dad's birthday is right after mine. So we're both, you know, December babies. The two of us are, are, are major Capricorns, whatever that means. You could tell me anything about my star sign and I'd be like, oh my God, that is so me. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. But it's, you know, having a birthday after Christmas is really just this emotional no man's land. It's like, it's not Christmas. It's not New Year's. Nobody wants to do anything with you. Uh, nobody wants to come to your party. Um, people like will hand you a gift and be like, oh, that's for your birthday too. It's a pair of socks. So like left one's Christmas, right one's your birthday. <laughs> my dad never stood for that. If somebody did that to me, he'd be like, so is your gift. And they'd be like, but my birthday's in July. And he's like, yeah, that's right. And making my dad sound much tougher than uh, he was. He was um he was an infomercial writer. He wrote infomercials for a living. Uh, I am not joking. That was my father's career. He's very proud of it. I'm very proud of him. I love infomercials so much. You turn the TV on at 2 a.m. I will be sucked into it. Sometimes I just go on YouTube and watch infomercials from the 90s. And I think that's fine. My dad wrote um he wrote fitness infomercials. All the muscles. You name it. Chest, arms, yeah. Eyes, bodies, shoulders, and the he wrote that one. Great workout, work in the gut. Yeah, my dad wrote that infomercial. My dad wrote basically any any commercial about something that told you you would get ripped or that you could like solve your problems in 10 seconds a day. I own this blender too, okay? I own, it's actually, and I'm so sorry to sell it short. It's not just a blender. It's 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 so many things in one and I've had it uh, for, for six years. It, it's still going, okay? The point is that he sold you, uh, you know, the promise of a better life in just 10 minutes a day. Okay. And what I loved most about my dad is that he truly believed in everything he sold. He would send them to me at college and be like, Nora, I'm going to need your feedback on this vacuum. And I'd be like, uh, Steve, uh, we don't vacuum. We are, are, are three 21 year old girls. We, we, we recently lit our couch on fire during a party for fun, <laughs> but sure. Yeah. I'll test the vacuum. Thank you. Thank you. So I always wanted to be, you know, on the infomercials, but my dad was like, no, you could write them. Like you're more of like a behind the scenes kind of gal, which, you know, it's, he's not wrong. I do write these things, <laughs> not infomercials. I write, you know, I do, I write a podcast that, you know, but also I have the opportunity to go in front of the camera and sell you something tonight. What is it? It's a beautiful, beautiful cotton poly blend sweatshirt. Okay. A hand printed in Minneapolis, Minnesota by a by a female screen printing 
okay, that was rude, screen printing artist designed by our merch queen here at TTFA and still kicking, Gigi, also from our terrible thanks for asking episode, the beautiful ones. She made this beautiful sweatshirt, okay? It says happiest holidays. We have right here the crying eye logo and sort of a, a Nordic holiday print. This kind of sweatshirt was inspired by my fifth grade teacher, Miss Brain, who had the best collection of holiday sweatshirts, not sweaters, holiday sweatshirts. It's versatile. It 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 really, I think, um, just just screams um, sophistication and and cheer and merriness. Am I doing a good job at this? I think so. I think it's that, I mean, when you talk about a cotton poly blend, all right, you're talking about this. You're talking about the limited number of, of, of items that we have. We only made some of these and when they're out, they're out. You won't be able to buy them if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. You're going to need to go to happyishholidays.com, happyishholidays.com. You're going to go in you're going to watch the show. You're going to get out your credit card, get it warmed up, and you are going to uh, support uh, two female artists with this beautiful, beautiful, um, amazing sweatshirt that uh, uh, you know I can't wait to get my hands on. Hopefully, this she can't wait to get her hands on one. And guess what? We don't make your size. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. Okay. What a shame. So Stacy just cannot get her paws on. Thank you, Kira. Um, I do believe my dad would be proud of me and something just came over me in that moment. And I think he inhabited my body. And, um, and, and that's probably why I started sweating. And also I really think that I got into the, I got into the zone with that a little bit, a little bit. Did get a compliment there from Lorelai McInerney. If you're wondering, are we related? Not technically, she's my sister-in-law, but still I will take that compliment, Lori. Um, and if you think that my, uh, my dad would be proud of me, really, that's all I'm looking for in life. Thank you so much. <sighs> so um, the operators are standing by, internet operators, not real operators. Um, internet operators are just, I think, um, I, I, I don't know. Okay, but you can't call to buy it. You have to do it on the internet um, the, the way that we do everything these days. So hmm, let's get on with it, shall we? I would love if all of you could just focus up. <laughs> Thank you get so distracted. The way that I am able to believe that I am actually interacting with all of you, that I'm actually not just speaking into my dark kitchen um, and one light that's behind a camera, but that I'm really playing to an audience, I, I think might point to a... I, I'll talk to my therapist about it, but I'm like, I'm like a little too into it. Like I'm a little too comfortable with it. Like I'm getting like a little too much out of this, but we're going to do... Um, probably what you came here for, which is a real terrible thanks for asking story. You ready? I'm going to make this evening um, just a little bit more about myself. <laughs> I'm Nora McInerney, and this is Terrible Thanks for Asking. And if I may, I would like to set a scene for you. I would like you to take a deep breath. <sighs> Sigh it out. I would like you to imagine that it's 1994. It's 1994 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The weather is a high of 26 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you live anywhere else in the world, you're like, oh, cold. But if you are in Minneapolis, you're like, heat wave. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's above zero, but below freezing. That means we're probably going to get a nice fluffy snow. You know these things. It's a very, very special night. Just a few weeks earlier, Mariah Carey did something incredible. She released her iconic Christmas album, Mariah Carey, Merry Christmas, MC, MC. I think you, I think you get it. Um, and what she did there was she turned a time of joy and wonder into a time of absolute sexiness for me and for the many, many middle schoolers who were able to sneak access to MTV or VH1 while their parents were still at work, no longer were my friends and I content to wish for an Easy Bake Oven that we were 100% too old to use. If you are 14 years old, you should not be cooking by a light bulb. That's uh, At this point, you could just graduate to a microwave or even just a, a full oven. Um, and yes, I did eventually get an easy bake oven. That was eighth grade. That was, it was, it was too much. Um, it was too much. And honestly, like 
it wasn't bad food. <laughs> I still sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I could have like a tiny itty bitty muffin that's just like this big that I cooked by the light of a 100 watt light bulb, which by the way, you don't even need the full easy bake oven for. I'm pretty sure you could just turn on a heat lamp and technically bake something. Let's not get into that. So no longer would an easy bake oven be the thing that satisfied me. Um, no, no, no. My friends and I wanted what Mariah promised. We wanted to be able to put on a sexy Santa snowsuit uh, with a little bit of fur. First of all, we wanted to be able to fill it out. Then we wanted to be able to pull it on, have voluminous hair, be romping through snow that somehow like wasn't cold, but also, and didn't like, you know, stick to you and then make you wet, but also was like just kind of perfect for like throwing. And we wanted someone to want. That's what we wanted. We wanted exactly what that song promised us. Okay. Like, I don't wanna... <laughs> look, all we wanted for Christmas, all I wanted for Christmas was Andy Hannon. Andy Hannon. Hmm. Man, look at that babe. Honestly. Okay. This is the only boy who I could be interested in because he was the only boy that I could make eye contact with. He was the only boy who, who, who I could literally look in the eye. When you hit 5'9 at age 11, it, you start to look like everyone's mom by sixth grade. Okay, that's me in sixth grade. I'm wearing a vest. I'm wearing a gold tone chain outside, out, outside of a turtleneck, just so people know, it is it is 14 karat gold plated. Thank you. The bangs were wispy. The the part was uh, was on the side. Okay, I look like I'm just ready to get you into just a little turnkey condo downtown. Yeah. So Andy Hannon was not just like it was not just my choice. He was kind of like the only choice. Not to like discount like how cute he was because he really really was. So. It's Christmas Eve, but tonight is no longer about anticipating the virginal vaginal birth of, uh, of, of, of my Lord and Savior. It is not even about the presents that my mother will wrap and then, and then forget and give me 10 years later, like when I was 22 and I got a set of dollhouse furniture for a dollhouse that had been gone for, ooh, a decade, at least. No, 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 no. This night is about pure unadulterated, unrequited desire, okay? And at this point, our subject has um, a, not kissed a boy, and frankly, that's not even on her list of desires. She doesn't really know what she wants because she goes to a Catholic school and the extent of her sexual education has been plant reproduction. Plant reproduction. So um, she does know how plants do it, and now when she sees cut flowers, even at age thirty-seven, she's like feels like like a slight amount of shame, like ugh, ugh. <laughs> lilies in a vase. I'm like, oh god, no, oh god, I know how they do it. I know how they. I know how they make little lily plants. I know exactly how. I know how they do that. No, 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 no. Nora is interested in. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I don't know, uh, playing a game of horse in the uh, Annunciation School basement gym where we also do tornado drills. That, that to her is really the height of romance is to revisit the place where we're forced to play several variations on, on dodgeball and, and, and just, you know, sink one from, from I, I, it's been a long time since I've played sport. Just sink one, okay, just sink one and, and, and have this guy realize, oh my gosh. And so this evening is not, um, it, it cannot be understated that this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity not to get closer to God, not to remind myself why we, we, we cannot write Xmas ever. It is an opportunity for this romance to bloom uh, at Midnight Mass, which starts at 9 p.m., 9 p.m. Um, I had assumed from just like listening into some of his conversations and just, you know, uh, knowing that like a lot of other sixth graders, uh, you know, are now allowed to go to midnight mass again, starts at 9 p.m. Uh, so I assumed like Andy will be there. And when he's there, when we lock eyes across the pew where he's he's standing with with Bill and Marty, his parents and his older brothers, whose names I can't recall, but we're, we're also very tall and very cute, but but too old, too old. Um, I need an outfit that just says like, oh, hey, I, oh my God, is it, 
is it Christmas? I just, no, I just, I just dress like this all the time. Like, yeah, no, I just always look like a, not a girl's face friend. Like I was just like, look like a girlfriend, you know? Um, I need the kind of outfit that would make him say, I would like to hold your hand in somebody's unfinished basement while watching a movie that is PG-13, even though we're 12. How would we do that? Um, well, we would sneak into Mr. Movies and we would switch the cassettes and rest in peace, Mr. Movies. If Mr. Movie is out there, I'm so sorry. I, I have to imagine that the only thing that killed your business was underage children trying to sneak PG-13 movies. Um, I, I can't think of another reason why the cassette industry would not be thriving um, during a, a global pandemic. I, I, I need an outfit that does all of that. And I think I nailed it. I do. I think that this is exactly what that outfit does. I do. I mean, we have uh, the kind of outfit that makes Diane Keaton look like a stone cold. I mean, just, oh my God, like put it away. Like it makes Diane Keaton look a little too, you know, like, oof, is that a role model? No, this is a role model. A girl who is wearing gym socks with Mary Jane's gym socks tucked into leggings underneath a full jumper over a Peter Pan blouse under a cardigan that goes down below her waist and every button of that cardigan is buttoned. There's a beret. Why? It completes the look. Dad, I will not be taking this off during the service. I've been wearing it all day. So there's a line in more, my forehead. Okay, there's a line in my forehead. I can't take it off, Dad. My hair is flat. I've been wearing this beret in anticipation. I've been wearing this beret all day. My hair is greasy. Leave me alone. How could Andy not fall in love with her? Tell me. Tell me. I'll wait. Oh, I'll wait. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Thank you, Blair. You thought I wouldn't wait? Blair, we all are in love with her. And guess what? There's really just one more question to ask, which is who wore it best? Was it me? Or was it Samantha? Okay. Was it this American girl uh, from, from, from the Industrial Revolution who lived with her wealthy grandmother? Okay. Who, who, who wasn't sure how to feel about Cordelia, her uncle's feminist girlfriend? I honestly do think that Samantha wore it better, but only because um, she really did come from wealth and class and sophistication. But back to church. We go and it's it's church. It's like every other you know night at church. It's like you you go, you sit down, you sing, you stand up, you you, you sit down, you stand up. Like the cantor is singing, and you're like, we we need to bring it down. We can't sing up here the whole time. It's so, it's so high. And like, you, I have to hear my dad try to be like, we, oh, oh come on. So difficult. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look around again, carefree, didn't even know he would be there, but I don't see Andy. And then church ends and we, we, we walk out, there's a foyer, everybody bottlenecks in that foyer because nobody actually, the temperature has dropped at this point. It's probably like 15. That's a little too cold. People are bundling up. Everyone's like, oh, where's my snow scraper? Oh gosh. And I'm walking out, we're packed in, we're packed in. And I feel someone take my hand. I feel someone take my hand and then I hear him whisper into my ear, that was beautiful, wasn't it? And I look up and it's a middle-aged man who I guess because I was wearing a beret and I was five nine, um, assumed that I must be his middle-aged wife. And uh, we lock eyes and we both recoil and our, our, our look says it all. It says, oh my God. It says like, Ugh. he's like, Ugh. I'm like, Ugh. we're looking around frantically 
for our families, for any kind of escape. We're both desperately trying to wipe our memory of the horror that just happened. I never saw that man again, by the way. I think that, it, 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 I think that that was the interaction that got him to switch parishes. I, I can't say for sure, but I can say that I am haunted by that night. And I hope he is too. <laughs> I hope that the two of us, both together, never forget that night and never have any closure. Thank you. Oh, Marcella can't hear you. Oh, oh. Oh, we're on live TV, guys. We're actually oh, going to call Andy right now, Nora. So Shut up. Just give me a second. Let me pull him up real Shut quick. Up. I don't dial Shut very up. much anymore. You know, iPhones, I just talk into it. You're so... <laughs> Who are you? Who are you calling? Oh, my God! <laughs> Hey, do you have any of those sweatshirts in tall sizes? Uh, um, <clears throat> no, but I do think that a double XL would probably look really good on you. I'll just pull it down. I'll make it work. <laughs> oh my God, Andy Hannon, everybody. Good to see you, Nora. Your background is way better than mine. Yeah, I know. Where where are you calling from? Like, an, are you are you okay? Are you locked in an attic somewhere? Can we rescue you? <laughs> Just hiding out in a bunker. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. So Andy, uh, I picked out a special Christmas outfit just to impress you, and I have no idea why it didn't work. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean. Well, oh, I'm gonna text it. Just show it again. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, we'll show it again. So can you pull it up? I am blushing. <laughs> I've got it. Sonia, I've got you... it. That's oh, awesome. Oh, oh, you got it? Yeah. Yep. I mean. That's that's amazing. Right? It was a look. <laughs> Who's that guy? How are they? I mean, that is Andy. That is the coolest kid in the sixth grade class at Annunciation Catholic School. For everybody who's ever read my book and been like, how are you voted? I was voted most humorous female. Andy was voted most humorous male. I mean, it's a so, shame, it's a shame. But I, I mean, I assume I assume your life worked out. You're happy, things are fine. Yes, yes, doing great, awesome. Uh, so are you sure that's okay. the guy that you were <laughs> that's, dressing that's up for? That's the guy, that's the sure? guy, yeah. Okay. That's the guy in that Mighty Ducks pullover. Like sure. that was that was a brand name item. Okay, I don't know sure. if you I don't know if you had to go to Marshalls to get it or what, but yeah. Okay. I I didn't want to risk wearing the starter, you know. Okay. So, so here's the deal. I obviously didn't see you that night. I mean, it, it, if I had seen you, I mean, come on. I mean, and I I have some more news to break to you too. Oh God, what? Our family always went to the 4.30 mass, 4.30 p.m. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we couldn't stay up as late as the McInerney's. Yeah. Also, I love that midnight mass was at 9 p.m. But I also love that your parents were like, no, it's not going to happen. Did they, did they play Kermit's Christmas Wish at that mass, too? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Okay. It, that, that's, that's probably why, why we went to 4.30. That's probably why my dad went to nine o'clock because he thought Kermit's Christmas wish was uh, basically emotional manipulation. <laughs> he was like, I don't need a bunch of kids singing Kermit's Christmas Christmas wish to me. <laughs> He's a little, little grinchy, little grinchy. Um, okay, everybody, this is this is my middle school crush, Andy Hannon. Okay, currently not like a check up on him, but currently a married father of two uh, and a and a successful basketball coach and educator. Okay. Give him father a round of, of applause. Yes. In your room. Father of three. Oh, sh sorry. I, it's, I have not Google stalked him in a while. Father of three. Three. Okay. <laughs> His wife is very pretty. Good for her. Must be nice. <laughs> She's very pretty. She's a babe. She's a babe. She's a babe. She is. Um, so no hard feelings. No hard feelings. Uh, we'll we'll move on from this. And I'll, uh, I'll see you at like the 30-year reunion. <laughs> Great to see you. We might go to midnight mass this year. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Just we'll keep kidding. an eye on we your go son. To work yeah. Good. Good to see you. All right. Bye, Andy. My God. Oh, okay, guys. Um, anyone else uh, slightly sweaty? No? No? Again, can't raise. Also, when I get embarrassed, I turn very red. I turn extremely red. Uh, probably should not have worn red uh, to go with this, but let's just cool my cheeks down. We'll have this mug for you guys too. Uh, I'll slip into an infomercial uh, mode a little bit later, but it's pretty uh, It's pretty fancy. And it also says happyish holidays. Also, it holds all kinds of liquids. Anyways, I just have to recover for that for, for one moment. Marcel, um, that was a real smooth move. I respect yeah. you. Yeah, you know, put some respect on my name, as you should. You know, as, as I you should. should, as I should, as I should. So, um, holiday traditions, Andy apparently always went to 430 mass, huge miss, huge miss. If there are any sixth grade girls out there watching, wondering, like, what could I do better? You have got to pay attention. Okay. I, I, my whole life could be different. Had I just known it goes to 430 mass. Okay. But 430 mass is hard because like, I don't know, it's 430. Like who can remember? It's like, ugh. I don't know. I didn't go to mass a lot. Anyways, I grew up in a household where my mother's main tradition um, was that we have no traditions. <laughs> None. I mean, we have things that we would like sometimes do like more than once, but like no hardcore traditions. My mom is uh, truly wonderful. Truly wonderful. For example, this photo, she made both the dresses that my sister and I are wearing. She made them with her own hands and this old it, it, giant heavy sewing machine. It's mint green, she would haul it up from the basement. I told my teacher at the time, I was like, my mother works deep into the night to sew my clothing. And I wasn't wrong. She made two dresses while also raising four children and having a job. Like, oh my God, I respect her. And she is also the kind of woman who more than once has almost burned my house down while cooking. Yeah, okay. That's her making me a steak. Um, for my birthday, I bought her a pair of Christmas jammies. Uh, she threw a little too much bourbon on there, then a match, uh, then decided, let's give this fire some oxygen. And then to try to extinguish it, she pulled her hair back and went, it didn't work. I, I, I have no idea how that house is, uh, is still standing. Woo. So moms are the best. Moms are the best. And my mother could not be here tonight. I didn't ask her, but I just kind of assumed she's extremely busy. She's very popular, but the best thing besides my own mom is this mom. The lines were crazy. The lines were crazy. I don't know. The tree looks crooked. You gotta be careful, the roads are icy. Gone up and down these stairs 15 times today. I gotta go to the market. Can you light the candle? I want every room to smell like pumpkin pie. The right corner doesn't have cheese, so that piece is for you. You know, your grandparents are coming. Why don't you wear a camisole under that? I got your brother an iPad. Come on, let's take a picture by the mantle. God, there's candy everywhere. I keep eating it. Now I'm trying to go. It's the holidays. Wow. How do you like that? You don't even know your kids are taping you, and there they are. They're taping you while you're trying to organize for the holidays. Listen to me. Nora. That Andy's a pretty good-looking fella. Sweater over a button-down shirt. I think I just saw a little bit of the notebook there. I don't know. If I were you, I'd start going to mass two times a day just to be safe. I think we all learned a, a lesson there, okay? Now, Nora asked me to do this show. And she, she goes, oh, it's, it's a holiday show. And then she said, it's happy-ish holidays. And I said, now there you go. Now you speak in my language because I'll tell you what. What's there to even celebrate? Uh, it's, it's Christmas. Oh, we, can't even, we can't even have people over? Uh, how are we even supposed to do it? Yeah, they're coming up with the vaccine. A little bit too late. What good is it in a month? I, I want to have it before, before the big day. So, yeah, everyone goes to me. Oh, you know, you got you to gotta do the Zoom. You got to do the Zoom Christmas. I don't want to do the Zoom Christmas. What, what am I going to do on Zoom Christmas? No. You know what? You know what? I got a bone to pick with Zoom Christmas. Okay? And, and that bone is this. People can come and go whenever they want. That's not the way I like it. You know how I like it? When, when people come over, I, I, I want them coming at 9 a.m. And that's when we're going to eat a full course meal. 
That's when we eat dinner. Okay, it's Christmas. We're eating dinner at 9 a.m. And I like that I get the control when they leave. Okay, how, how am I going to keep people hostage at my house the entire day if they can leave whenever they want on the Zoom? Here's what I do. And you guys can take this tip. If someone comes into your house, you go, let me take your coat. I take their coat. I put it in a room that they would never be able to find. And even if they did, they would go, this isn't where the coats go. You put it in the Then way later in the evening, they go, oh, you know what? We're going to start heading out. We're going to get going. I, I, can, can you go get the coat? I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, why don't you go have another piece of pie? There's always more pie because I make seven pies per person. Okay? So I give them another piece of pie before you know it. Now they're starting to talk. No problem. They're there for a couple more hours. On Zoom, they can just leave? Uh-uh. No. I don't like that. I'm going to see if my nephew can do something about it. He works in tech. Makes a good chunk of change. I'll tell you what, you go up to San Francisco, any of those jobs up there, my God, wow. In my next life, I'm coming back as a tech guy, okay? You ever go into these offices? I'll tell you what, they get their hair cut. They get their hair cut in the office. C can you believe it? I I'm telling you, they got, they got people making homemade ice cream right in there. I go, this is a dream. Uh, they pay you to come here. You, you, you can, I would pay to go there. My nephew had me over. I go in. I go, oh, he goes, you want a snack? I go, I don't want a snack. I brought a backpack the next time. I filled it all the way to the brim. I had snacks for six weeks. No problem. I got just about as much in that trip as I did in two trips to Costco. And believe me, this was not Kirkland brand, the types of snacks I was getting there. Some of them were a little off. Oh, hi, Nora. How are you? I was just catching the people up. <laughs> hi. Hi, Mom. How's it going? It's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It, as good as it can be. I, I I don't know if you heard me before, but wow, Andy. <laughs> wow, Nora. Wow, ho, ho, ho. Santa came a little bit early for the two of us tonight. Okay. <laughs> wow, Andy. Wow, wow, wow. I tell you what, not that <laughs> bad. Yeah. Wow. wow I know. Anyway. But now we're both married, so, you know. Yeah, you both married, you know, but, um, wow, he's nice eye candy, huh? A little bit. Uh, nice, nice thing. You know what else is nice eye candy? This background. My God, it looks like my dream background. Thank you. Oh, do you like yeah. it? Oh, I love I got, it. I, I mean. I got some really special ornaments. I got this one. It reminded oh, me of, of you. It's just butter. Oh, my God. I love it. Now, you know who wouldn't love that? My daughter. Every year she's got something. Oh, I don't want to eat bread. This year it's, oh, I, I'm vegan. I go, oh, vegan. Every single dish I've ever made is cream-based. Well, how am I going to not, how am I going to make it vegan? So I just call it vegan and hope she doesn't know it. She's just, she's not allergic. What's the big deal? I, my dad used to, used to, um, uh, say that uh, a, a certain family member who was lactose intolerant was faking it and that he was going to prove it by pouring cream into the soup and seeing That's what happened. That's my kind of guy. And this is now, this is the infomercial guy. I'll tell you what. Wow, the infomercial I'll, guy. Buy any, I'll buy anything I see in an infomercial. My God, I, every product I have is as seen on TV. Uh, I appreciate that. I, honestly, that's how I got to go to college. So, um, so in I, a way, also, I, I really supported your in a way maybe i am your mother I, I i sent you through college wow you did i'm sorry can you hear my dog just full-on licking herself or is that no i i can't hear okay, a thing good. but you know me good. my hearing's not what yeah. it used to be so so what do i know can you tell that i'm wearing magnetic lashes do they look a little loose to you at all wow i can't tell though they look beautiful though i i that's thank really you. beautiful yeah they look thank nice thank you can you really tell hard. i'm wearing I'm... my signature pants oh i love them thank oh. you very much yeah, and Taylor Law, 50% off. Then I, But I go, oh, really? I can do better than that. I, I have a $20 off coupon, a 30% off. They go, you can only use one. I go, I'm going to use them both. So it doesn't always if you work. Find, if you find a loose button or anything like that, they'll throw another another 5% another five off. I learned that I learned that from my friend Erin Mulcahy. You know her. She, she loves a deal. She knows how to get a deal. Oh, uh, Erin, a woman after my own heart. I love it. She's at the, she's at the sale racks at Marshalls every day, just combing through, making sure that there are no new markdowns that she missed. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm telling you, pe people say they can't wait to travel. I, I can't wait to spend about twelve to thirteen hours in a Home Goods and a Marshalls and a TJ Maxx. I'm going to spend the whole day in a strip mall. I can't wait. Oh, uh, God! Especially the strip malls that have all three, the greatest. The only ones Literally. I go to. 
literally the greatest. So, um, so you are the queen of Christmas. I respect you so much. I just wanted to get, um, I, I, I am this year. I know you always call me out for this. I am going to get my cards out before 2021. That is I'll the goal. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. It's you're going to see it. You're going to see it. Cause I'm ready to, I'm ready to actually do it. It's down to two photos and I just, I need you to just be the decider Perfect. for me. Perfect. Okay. Not a problem. Let me see it. Pull it up. Okay. All right. Pull there it up, go. Sonia. First photo. So this is, this is the first one. Sorry. I'm waiting for the photo. Uh, this is, it's this a, seems like maybe, uh, this is the, so this is the, oh, this is the photo. That, that's the one. That's, that's one of them. I have two choices. That's one of them though. That's the day we moved. So I thought it might just be kind of cute. For, right, right. Yeah. And could you, are these the final, these are the final outfits? Is there any wiggle room for maybe shoes or? That's, that's just it. That they were just, we took them the day that we moved. Uh, my friend Nicole came over. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I would love to speak with Nicole if she is the person who snapped this shot. Um, uh, Nora, I, we have another. We have another. Sonia, let's oh, throw great. up the. Oh, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, let's do the other. Uh, wait for the yeah. other. It's, oh. the, it's this one. Yeah. Now, black and white is classy. I'll tell you what, Nora. The last one, I would say, I wouldn't send that. I, I, I would sooner send. I would sooner send a photo of uh, the leaves. This one, I go, my God. Black and white. They're artsy. They're, they're classy. They're, they're interesting. That one I love. I look forward to seeing it in the mail. Okay. All right. Print it, ship it. It's going out. Um, and you can see almost everybody's face, which is like, you know, that's a big deal for us. Yeah, that's a big win. I mean, look, it, it, it's a big win. Maybe you crop, maybe you crop in a little bit so that the, uh, the truck isn't in there. Maybe we, uh, maybe we put a slap a green screen on, maybe put it in the, maybe, you know, Maybe put yourself in, in the mountains or something. But yeah, you know what a trick is, Nora? Let me just tell you this. I love this photo. A trick that I do, take your photo in January. Start the process then. I bring Santa hats everywhere I go with my kids. So then that way, whenever there's a good picturesque moment, I don't care if they're in bathing suits, if it's the summer, you slap a Santa hat on, boom. You got yourself your Christmas card. You get it way out of the way. I send them out six months early, never miss. So um, we we do have like I didn't want to like make you nervous. But we have like an audience. We have an audience. We've got a couple thousand people who are couple who are thousand. watching us. Now I'll yeah. tell you what. Now that <laughs> a couple thousand people, I could probably feed them all with what's in my fridge. I promise you that. Wow, that's exciting. Okay, hello everybody. Hi there. Yeah, hello. <laughs> they're, they're um they're here. They're here at happyshollidays.com just watching the live show. But we, we do know that you are the queen of Christmas. We wanted to um, open it up to the audience to see if any of them had any, you know, questions, if they needed any tips on I'd how to, happy. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, hello. Hello. Mom says my outfits aren't church appropriate. What do I wear? Now you're not going to like my answer to this, but I have, I haven't even seen the outfit and I have to agree. I, I, I'll tell you what, the things my daughter comes in saying she's going to wear to church, I, I go, uh -uh, you're going you're gonna to have to add something to that. It's always like she comes with just the, the end product. And I go, is that where we're starting? Now, Nora had an outfit on earlier in her photo. There was a beret, a long skirt, and about three to four sweaters. That to me is perfect church attire. Take some notes from the queen. And I and you and you and you won't go wrong. Slap a camisole on under anything. I put a camisole on under a bikini. Okay, you always want to have a cami. Oh, hello, Melissa. How do I tell my mom she can't come over for Christmas? Ha! <laughs> if I were your mother, there would be no way to tell me that. Good luck, Melissa. I wish you well. Uh, but you know what? If you don't wanna, I'll take her. I'm telling you, I got enough biscotti as as favors. I don't know what to do with it. And okay, Missy. Could it be Melissa in another? Okay, Missy, <laughs> Nora, no. What is the correct? What does that say, Nora? What is the correct Christmas then? I don't have my my glasses yeah, on. Yeah, my the, are everywhere. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom, what's the correct Christmas dinner? All right. So picture this. Picture this. Um, picture this. You have a football field, right? F a football field. Picture that filled with cream-based casseroles. You're gonna want to double that, and you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, that's so perfect. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you we so much we for love you. Me. We love, love you. We'll see you on Zoom. You do. 
See you later. Bye. Bye. So that wasn't actually a mom. That was Alyssa Limparis. Um, she is a comedian. She is so funny. She's a friend of mine. That character, a mom, is the basis of many, many viral videos that she has created. It is based on her mother, but her mother is in on the joke, which makes it extra special and, and very, very extra sweet. So thank you for rejoining us. Um, this is Happyish Holidays, a live stream from the podcast Terrible Thanks for Asking. I'm Nora McNerney. We had technical difficulties, which is the theme of 2020. <laughs> and now we're back. We're back. This live show is interactive. You can leave comments that we can actually see and pull into the show. If you are watching on happyishholidays.com, you can also buy our fancy merchandise. I did put on the sweater because I will just tell it to you straight. That dress was crushing my rib cage. It was getting medically hazardous to, to continue wearing that dress. So if you know this sound, You should probably know the man behind it. His name is Joffrey Lamar Wilson. He is a composer behind our theme music and many, many other wonderful songs. He is a singer. He is a songwriter. He joins us here tonight with his wife, Hannah Jensen. They are at Mother in Minneapolis. Christmas without you I'll be so blue just thinking about you Decorations of red on a green Christmas tree Won't be the same dear if you're not How we gonna live if we can't stop dying? In the car, in the street, from the comfort of our beds. How we gonna keep the mamas from crying? With the knee on the neck or a bullet in our head.
can turn a heart into a stone You can turn my body to a husk But you cannot erase my memory Though flowers eventually return to dust My kingdom for a horse The whole world in a grain of sand They told me to do my work I'm doing the best that I can Big wheel spinning. Everybody wants the Midas touch. They keep asking how I'm doing. They keep saying I'm doing too much. And everyone wants just a minute of my time. Can nobody give me a piece of mine? they want to do is take and take and take there's only so much to give away my kingdom for a horse the whole world in a grain of sand they told me so beautiful. I honestly love hearing the two of them sing. That was Joffrey Lamar Wilson, his beautiful wife, Hannah Jensen. Their music is just postbellum. We had their album linked. You can buy it just somewhere, somewhere within this app. And I hope you do. Everybody should get vinyl this Christmas. So um, what time is it right now? Well, we've blown through our one hour show time, which I told you I would do and we're not even halfway done. So what time is it? Game time. It's game time. And guess who is here to lead our game time? Misha Youssef. Misha is a writer. She's a podcaster. She's the CEO and founder of Dustlight Productions. They are a mission-driven podcast studio. I am lucky enough to call her a friend. I have her real phone number, not the fake Google number that she initially gives people. So I've made it past, um, made it past that level. Tonight, she is not just those things. She's also a game show host. Welcome, Misha. I, Nora, I was going to keep this short, but I cannot believe you called out my fake phone number. <laughs> I, I'm impressed by it. And when I figure out how to make one, everyone's getting a fake phone number. <laughs> you can you. do it in Google Voice. It's really easy. It costs you no money whatsoever. So but... many things that people <laughs> describe as easy are not easy for me. <laughs> I have a fake phone number and a fake email. So if you want to be oh. my friend, there are, there are hoops to jump through. <laughs> Good luck. And I made it. I made it. You made it. You made it. I'm so excited to host this game show tonight. I, I grew up watching Jeopardy my whole life, and I know they're looking for a new host. So if there are any scouts in the audience... Um, it's about time Jeopardy was hosted by a woman of color. Uh, so today's show is going to be kind of wait, wait, don't tell me style. 
obviously holiday themed. It will be a little wacky, so bear with me. Um, I will explain the rules. We may or may not follow them. Uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So our contestants, we've already selected our contestants. Our first person uh, is Hans Buto, who you all probably already know. Hi Hans, how are you doing? I'm great, how are you doing, Misha? I would watch you, by the way, on Jeopardy. On a game show? 100%, on I would Jeopardy? actually tune in. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, any game show, but Jeopardy, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I think about is like, I don't know if you have to know all the answers, because I feel like I'm definitely not smart <laughs> I think you might have help. I think that might give you cards. Good, good. As long as I have cards, I think I could do it too. Um, okay, so our first contestant is Hans, who was uh, formerly with Terrible Things for Asking and is now at the New York Times. Um, our second contestant is Steph Whittles Walks. Hi, Steph. How are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. What's the little doll and, and the skull <laughs> right Oh, my behind? God. I, well, so I'm um, Jewish, so I don't have any Christmas decorations. I just have creepy dolls in the corner. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so glad to have somebody who is not um, someone who grew up celebrating Christmas. I, I feel Thank less you. lonely. Sure. Thank you. Thank you right for here. being here. Um, our third contestant is Kate Kennedy, who is the host of Be There in Five. Hi, Kate. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Did you put up the lights just for this or are they always there? <laughs> You know, I, I have an issue with the, the lackluster cardigans on Jeopardy. I thought I could, you know, really dress it up for this trivia segment. <laughs> I appreciate it. I Yeah, it's very holiday themed, right? Love it. It matches the lights on your ceiling. That's great. Great to have you. Um, okay, so our last contestant is Miss Danielle from Help a Human Out. Hi. Hello. And you got the Christmas tree. Oh, I got the Christmas tree. The You're tree the only is up one. and ready. Great. Well, I hope it's a sign of good luck. Um, we are ready to get started. So um, are our contestants ready? Do I get to see them all at the same time? Yes, I do. Amazing. Um, okay. So our first question, it's an easy one. It's for 0 0.01 points. <laughs> Whoever is keeping track, good luck. These, this point system is kind of crazy. Um, blank is the youngest and arguably the most famous of Santa Claus's reindeers. Who knows the answer to this one? No one can help me not Okay, I feel like Hans is probably her. Yeah? Yeah. This is a lot of pressure. I'm suddenly I'm suddenly feeling the pressure. But uh I mean you and it wasn't actually you who <laughs> I don't know I think Danny's almost got it like I'm watching there's counting happening there's fingers yeah. almost. I don't know I'm gonna have to go with do we, just, do we, do we shout it out no no it's Hans's turn I picked Hans oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a team sport <laughs> I know I was um, supposed to the rules, but I feel like I didn't really explain them at all. <laughs> Whatever, we'll figure them out as we go. <laughs> Who I mean, is it, clearly, Hans? It's clearly Donner, right? The most famous of all of the. Oh, come He's on. not the most famous. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rudolph, right? He's the baby and the famous one, right? Yeah, but you already tried once, so you don't get the points for that. Somebody yeah, else. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's 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 do it, Miss Danielle. Rudolph. Yep. Yeah. Wow. You got it right. She wins our 0 0.01 or two. I cannot remember how many points I offered for this question. Um, okay, let's do the next one. Um, let's try to keep our answers concise. Um, let's not just give a million answers in one. <laughs> you do not have to say them in question form like Jeopardy, but maybe later on we'll, we'll make it a little bit spicy. Um, the first president to pardon a turkey was blank. Uh, and this part of the question is for 6,984 points and his zodiac sign is blank. So the first president of the Turkey was blank and his zodiac sign is blank. And this time we don't get the music. <laughs> it's a very serious question. Danielle, I feel like you <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for Danielle to have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. 
Okay. If none of our contestants know the answer, if they don't even want to try to guess. I'll try. You'll try. Okay, Daniel, let's go. Lincoln, and he's a Sagittarius. I do not know whether Lincoln is a Sagittarius, but it well, then it's right. Question. Then it's, it's right. <laughs> then it's half. It's half right. It's half right. <laughs> you don't need. You don't even know the answer, so it's half right. I get it. It's a Sagittarius. Well, I didn't look up every president's zodiac sign before this. <laughs> I have no way of knowing what Lincoln's zodiac sign is, but we're gonna throw it out to the audience to figure out if somebody out in the audience knows the answer to this question. I can definitively tell you who it's not. It's not Taft. Oh, well, thank you for that, Hans. It's a Helpful. it's a turn of the century presidential joke. Just they're, <laughs> they're all the rage. <laughs> what first came to mind is Grover Cleveland, but I have no idea why. That doesn't make a ton of sense. I mean, I don't know what would make sense in a turkey pardoning sense, but. I mean, yeah, I I thought Nixon. I just thought, you know, let let's let's. It just makes sense that he would be the first to pardon a turkey. No <laughs> idea what his uh, what his zodiac Wait, sign is. Wait, did she Probably say killer. pardon or carve? Yeah. Pardon. Pardon. Oh, I actually know this. Wait, <laughs> the first person to pardon a turkey. Why do I know this? Why did I just watch a video on this? It was. Homeboy had a son. The son was really emotional. He was like, please don't do this with the turkey. Who was the big? Tell me the answer. Who was the guy with the turkey? I'm phoning a friend. I'm phoning a friend. Come on, There's man. No tell me what Nora can tell you. Nora, who is it? Because I know this guy. He had a little sensitive son, and the son cried, and he, he was in public, and then he said, hey, you know, don't cry. I'm going to pardon the turkey, and then it became a tradition. Who was it? Uh... Nora, you're Nora, muted. Nora, you're, you're on mute. mute. The line of 2020. You're on, you're on mute, Nora. You're muted. You're muted. Sign it out for us. We know all the president's hand signals. Just give us the hand signal of the president. It's yeah, finger spell it. Benjamin Harrison. No. no. It's <laughs> Who was it, babe? Truman. Okay, can you hear Truman. me now? Yes. It's Truman. Truman. It's Truman. It's Truman. Okay. Here's the thing. We're having technical difficulties. Do I know the answers? No, because Hans will understand why. To save myself one page of scrolling in the run of show, I hmm? took them out. I took them out. I was like, I don't need to know. Misha knows the answers. So we don't know, but I know that. I got it. It's not true. I know it. I just, I found a friend, my my beautiful okay. fiance. Um, All right, it is not gonna ask, it We're going to ask Sonia. Sonia, who, who, just give us the answer. Okay. <laughs> oh! Hey! And he had a sensitive son. That's he had shocking. a sensitive son. Rest in peace. I, I don't Holly actually uh, believe that's the right answer. I just watched wow. a vocabulary video. <laughs> and I, think that, I don't think that's really true, but... <laughs> but I like I think JFK, it's, so we'll go with it. I think, I think, it, it's I think it really true. was Lincoln. I think, it I think Lincoln. it's somewhat true. Okay, so... um. <laughs> So, Sonia, the thing is, I don't have the questions. I need you to literally <laughs> paste them in the document. But I vaguely remember this one. How long does Ramadan last and how is it decided? That's the question. <laughs> Who gets to decide it and how long is it? Wait, what was the second part? There are blank days and what? There are how many days in Ramadan and who decides that? How many days Every year. in Ramadan? Decides. Um, it's right um, on the tip of your tongue. It's like you do know it. Yeah. And yeah, the points point for this are me? like literally this is for everything. And the prize that you could get was tucked underneath me. And it's this plate that I ordered from Shutterfly with a photo of my <laughs> tortoise on it. Aww. And, um, and it makes it look like he's dead. He's not. He's right here. Proof of life. <laughs> Proof of life. He's right here. Okay. He's he's here. He's here. He's he's got it. And um, so photogenic. So photogenic. Isn't he so cute? I'm he's so guys. cute. He does this thing, and he just curls up, and you think he's a rock. Like honestly, nature is so. It makes me emotional. Let's get back to Ramadan. How long is it? So it's the jackpot. 
it, how many days vary year to decides? year? Hmm? Right. If the days vary year to year, it could, does. Wouldn't we it not does. be able to answer that first part of the question? Well, you can by saying like it's x slash x. Mm. Interesting. It's thirty days. Am I supposed to raise my hand? No, it's correct. Right. This is honestly there are no Let's more rules. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. It's thirty Except days. That and Hans, Hans has to keep trying to crack jokes from the crack <laughs> of the last century. <laughs> I got you. Oh, you're good. Um, it's thirty days, and the turtle decides. That's my answer. It's, it's very close. Thank you, you are actually very close. You're very Thank close. You. You're very close. Sonia, we're gonna need that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the answer. It's either 29 or 30 days, and the moon decides. The moon decides. <gasps> okay, moon. So, I like moon energy. Yeah, we're also having technical difficulties. Um, just on the the regular, like the studio, like big time. So, um, so, so yeah. So anyone can decide by looking at the moon or NASA could decide, or I could decide just by, because I, if you're a moon enthusiast, you can make these right. decisions. <laughs> okay. It's either Never 29 would have or 30. The moon. Never would have guessed the moon. What a stretch. Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. Wow. Really amazing. <laughs> really amazing. Um, Hans, were there any other obscure jokes that you were interested in making? Oh, man. I mean, have you heard the one about Millard Fillmore? It's... <laughs> It's amazing. It's super <laughs> topical too. It's really like, oh, no, I don't have any more turn the century. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Didn't it's we good. go okay. to the moon under Kennedy's presidency? That all kind of fits. Allegedly, we went to the moon. <laughs> Hans already knows. Hans already knows that I come from a family. I'm not going to name names. I come from a family where a person in my family of origin is like, did we? <laughs> what? Who's to say? He's, he's flat earth adjacent. <laughs> what? It's Uncle Rick. It's Uncle Rick, it's... right? Yeah, it's definitely him. <laughs> oh, it could be, it could be. Um, okay, now, uh, because I don't know any of the other questions, I'm gonna need <laughs> to know from, <laughs> from all of you, um, Kate Kennedy, you can take this. Um, do you have a good a, a holiday story? Tell me your worst holiday story, if you can. I know you have good <gasps> ones. I know you do. I want to know. I got my first American Girl doll <laughs> when I was too old to get one, <laughs> frankly, and when my parents finally could afford it. And I was like, thanks. I'm Actually, I was I lost my shit and I, I played with that for for a significant number of years. Yeah, I was like in ninth grade, like her name's Kirsten. She grew up on the prairie. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a great holiday story. That's like the best holiday ever. Um, I think for me, holidays are tough anytime you hear the song The Christmas Shoes. I think it's really sad and it it's a tough uh oh. It, it, it's a, it's just, I don't like it. I, I struggle with um, a Christmas feeling homesick when I'm already at home. I hear things like grown up Christmas lists and I just think of years gone by and it makes, it, it, there's a sad undertone to so much Christmas music. I think that's been tough for me. Uh, but what's also tough is I grew up and uh, with a pastor who rescued circus animals and he would do a living nativity and bring a camel into the sanctuary, He'd bring tigers, lions, I'm not kidding. Um, and uh, one Christmas I got to ride the camel, but it did pee uh, while <laughs> I was within its vicinity. And um, that was tough. I got through it, but you know, not, not bad all things considered. It's not bad. <laughs> but circus, ch circus church is kind of a, you know. It's it's a can of worms to open. <laughs> I, I didn't know where you were going to go when you started with rescued. I was like, uh, New York circus animals. And I was like, eh. <laughs> Still. Honest, the whole thing is really, really, really bizarre. Uh, but yeah, I, we got to um, watch a physical lamb lay on a physical line at, at Easter to illustrate God's love. It was, it was in, yeah. I have to regress through this a little bit more until I just probably publicly talk about it. <laughs> Steph, you're, you're, you, 
you really, I, you got out easy. Okay. I know. Yeah. I was going to say like, you guys really, wow. I just, yeah. We are dolls and skull and skulls. I don't, wow. Good for you. Oh God. Good for you. <laughs> um, guys, exciting. thank you for being such good sports. Um, because if you can't tell, um, things did not go to plan. Okay. Mm. Uh, Misha disappeared. Her power went out on her block. Mm. So of she's course. sitting, <laughs> she's sitting in darkness. And if there is anybody from the Jeopardy family watching, she was really going to nail that audition. And I need you to, I need you to, I need you to know that. Um, so everybody, we have to refresh the studio. We will be back. We will be back. Danielle won because she's the only person who, who answered half of a question wrong. Danielle, this plate is going to be in the mail to you. It, yes. It, it, and I need that you. plate. So I need it's, it. It's, it's not intended for use with food. It is purely decorative, purely right. decorative. Merry um, Christmas to me. Everybody else, follow all of these amazing podcasts. Steph is from Last Day. Kate is from Be There in Five. Danielle is from Help a Human Out. And Hans, I've never heard of his podcast. It's the Daily. It, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't. I don't know. Honestly, hope they make it. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, Nora. I love we'll you. Right we back. love you. We'll be back. Bye. The name of the game in 2020 is technical difficulties. Uh, the name of the game in 2020 is Nora, you're on mute. The name of the game is like, mm -hmm, wait, uh, sorry, you're frozen. The name of the game is poor Misha's power went out in the middle of, of a segment. Oh my goodness. But you know what? I know that because you watch terrible things, you watch terrible things for asking. You never watch terrible things for asking. You listen to terrible things for asking because you are a part of terrible things for asking because you are here at an event called Happyish Holidays. You know stuff happens and we roll with it. We just roll with it. And we all know that the reason for the season is gifts. It is things. It is stuff. That's what I always tell my children. I tell them there are three main things in life. How you look, what other people think of you, and the, what you own, okay? Really, I don't, I don't actually say that, but I could. If you are watching this live stream right now on Facebook or YouTube, that's great, we love you. Also, you're gonna wanna actually go to happyishholidays.com because on that website, we have made limited edition merchandise that you can only buy tonight, limited quantities, baby, made by some people who are amazing, amazing parts of our team. Gigi, we got Jillian, we have these, these gifts, these are the perfect gifts. We have this amazing cotton poly blend Christmas sweatshirt. Richard, can people see it? It says happyish holidays. The print is Nordic and yet made out of crying eyes. If that's not genius, I don't know what is. I am wearing an extra large, um, but typically I like things very small and very tight. They're unisex sizes. So I'm six, 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 one, six feet, depending on the day. And, um, I sometimes wear unisex small, but today I'm wearing a unisex XL. Okay. We have this mug. We have this mug. It's perfect for holding. Stacy, you have got to stop licking yourself while I am on a live stream. Thank you. I swear to goodness, the, the dog will be literate. Stop. I just asked you, stop. Stacy, please. She'll be truly just comatose all day and then come to life the minute that I need to not hear another human being. She's not a human, she's a dog. Another big creature making mouth noises. If you do not want mouth noises in your life, I cannot tell you enough. You don't want a dog, it's 100% mouth noises all the time. Please stop. This Happyish Holidays mug, perfect for holding liquids, perfect for um, a turtle napping place. I'm not going to put him in it right now, but he does like to have a mug turned on its side so he can crawl into it. Um, and, and that's how he naps. I don't judge it. I just know that he likes it. And, and, and who am I to stop him? Okay. We also made a very, very limited edition ha happyish holidays mask. Perfect for keeping a distance from people. Perfect for letting strangers know how you feel about the season. All of these. Oh, Gigi made me a candle and she made like, I think only 20 of these exist. Only 20 Happyish Holidays candles. It says Happyish Holidays on this side, on this side, just the crying eye. She throws glitter on top of them if you're lucky. Beautiful. Only 20 of those exist and you can only get them this evening at happyishholidays.com.
This is also my audition tape for the world of infomercials. So if you work at QVC, I cannot stress it enough. I am absolutely interested in that job offer. So those are all very good gifts. So is Joffrey's Music, which we have available for sale at this very website. You can buy one of his vinyl albums and impress everyone you know. They'll know that you are deep. You are a deep person. You listen to music on vinyl. I'm sorry, an MV3 would not do. He also sells MV3s. But tonight we are selling the vinyl. Okay. And tonight I really do want my dog to stop it. Stacy, please just stop you in, in an hour or two, you can lick yourself. Okay. So those are all great gifts. They're, those are all great gifts. Um, and, and, and I've, I've gotten plenty of gifts for myself from Shutterfly, our sponsor in no way is this a part of the script, but I did buy this plate as a gift to myself, and I do regret giving it away to Danielle because I wanted to keep it. I got a decorative plate with a picture of my tortoise on it, one of the best photos. He's eating a piece of lettuce like a little prince. And then I also got another photo of him, and I turned it into a set of playing cards. Is that a thing a normal person does? I don't know. Would a regular person just maybe put a photo of their family, their children, um, themselves? Hard to say. So those are all good gifts. However, uh, we asked you, um, for disappointing gifts, and you did not disappoint us. I've got a few stories to tell about the best worst holiday gift our listeners have ever received. The first one is from Alexander Ewing. So this is from Alexander. Right before I graduated high school, I started dating this nice young guy from my class. When it came time for our first Christmas, he sweetly struggled with what to get me because we'd only been together seven months. How could he know what I like? I will have to say, Alexander, if somebody dates me for seven months and doesn't know what I like, I, it's a huge red flag. But the day comes. Alexander uh, it, it opens this gift. He's, he's so excited. Well, gift number one is a fifth of Kahlua. Fifth of Kahlua, these are high school seniors. Um, how would he get it? Oh, he just begged an older friend. He begged an older friend. Um, that's, that's gift number one. I mean, it's an intense liqueur, highly flavored, very high sugar content, but, but you know, ideal for an 18 year old in the Midwest. So that's a good gift. Second gift is a candle of a majestic black stallion rearing up on his hind legs. This is an actual photo that Alexander sent us. Is Alexander a candle person? No, because he's a high school boy. Is Alexander a horse person? No. Is this gift highly memorable? Absolutely. Now, how is this presented to Alexander, this fifth of Kahlua and this, this, this candle? It was presented in a brown paper bag brown paper bag, the kind that you would normally get in, uh, you'd get a lunch in. So, hmm, hmm, that's from Dave. Dave, we all hope that um, you got better at gift giving. Thank you, Alexander, for sharing that gift with us. I have to mention that while you are watching this show, uh, we turned this, this submission into a contest. So at the end of this, I want you to listen closely to these stories because one of these stories is actually going to win um, that set of playing cards, that set of playing cards. Cause my husband was like, how many did you order? And I was like, well, I ordered two cause I forgot about the first one. So you're going to, you're going to get that set of uh, playing cards that I ordered from Shutterfly. And you're also going to get a Shutterfly gift card. So pay attention. The first is the black stallion, stallion candle slash Kahlua. The second one is from Erin Stevens. Erin Stevens writes to us. She's 17 at the time. She's 17. I imagine that she's close to my age. I imagine that this is the millennium. She's dating this guy. They've been inseparable for months. He works at a JC Penny at the time rest in peace, JC Penny. And, um, you know, she goes and visits him at work, like any codependent high schooler would do. She like follows him around the mall to like, see what he likes. And, and, and then also like points out things she would like. This is the unsubtle art of getting the gift you want from somebody that you are dating. You walk around and you're like, Oh, look at this jewelry. Look at this diamond pendant from Zales. How would that look like on me? Hmm. Look at these cool shoes that I found. Yeah. They're Steve Madden uh, platform sandals. They're iconic. I would love those. Now, this boyfriend is special to me. I didn't date him, but Aaron said that he drove a geo tracker, a geo tracker. And, and Kate Kennedy and I have this in common. That was our dream car in high school. Our dream car was a plastic SUV that looks like, a, like basically a large Barbie car. Amazing. Geo tracker. They don't make them anymore, but they should. Bring that back. You'd sell two for everyone at General Motors who's watching. Anyways, this guy drove a GeoTracker with a subwoofer. So while people saw him driving up his Barbie SUV, they would also hear like, mm, mm, mm. he pulls up, it's a Monday. 
which is like after her dance classes. So she takes a shower. They're going to do their gift exchange. She goes downstairs to like dry her hair. She's got like one of those dryer combs and, you know, like she like, you know, pauses it to talk to him. Again, high school is very important. So she's done drying her hair. Her parents are in the next room. This guy's like, I got you your gifts. I got you your gifts. And she's like, okay, well, like you open yours first. And she got him cologne. Obviously she didn't say what kind, but I know in my heart that she got him either cool water or she got him eternity for men, possibly, possibly an Abercrombie signature scent. But again, this was not specified. This is just me projecting. Then he hands her a gift. She opens the first one. It's a hair dryer. It's, it's a hair. Oh, sure. I mean, you just saw me dry my hair, but yeah, give me a hair dryer. I, I get it. That's, I get it. Um, and he's like, well, I think that the one you're using could probably damage your hair. So I got you this one. So like, kind of thoughtful, like kind of controlling. Second gift, it's smaller, okay? It's in a box. It's got a good weight to it. And I can, I know from just knowing Erin through this email exchange that like she thought it was the Zales diamond pendant, okay? She thought it was. She opens it. It's a bottle of vitamins. This boyfriend got her a bottle of vitamins. He got her a bottle of vitamins and her parents who are within earshot hear their daughter's boyfriend tell their daughter, I can't be, I can't marry somebody and grow old with them. We're 17. If they don't take care of themselves. So I got you these vitamins. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. To this day, Erin, a hero, has never taken a vitamin. And I love that about her. Third of the best worst gifts. That's what we're doing. We are, you are listening to people tell us about their best worst gifts and soon we are going to vote and somebody is going to be the loser or the winner and one of them is going to get a prize. They're gonna get a hundred dollars to Shutterfly. They're also gonna get whatever I decide to send them from around my house. This one comes from Kimmy. I need you to listen closely. It's Christmas and Kimmy's mom gave her um, used underwear. Kimmy's mom gave her her own used underwear. Kimmy got a bag of her mother's used underwear. Uh, it, and to make matters worse or slightly better, they weren't even wrapped. They were not wrapped, but they were in a Target bag filled with gar like the kind that you would normally lar line your garbage can with. You all know what I'm talking about. A garbage bag filled with used underwear, tied at the top, seal it up, just like when you're taking out your garbage from your, from your, from your bathroom, um, handed to Kimmy during the family gift exchange. And her mom's like, what? They're per in perfectly good condition and they don't fit me anymore. As if the number one issue with getting a bag of your mother's used underwear is that they might not be freshly laundered. And her mom's like, again, they just don't fit me. Underscoring just how very used these underwear were. Kimmy's mother keeps insisting, they weren't a gift, but like you handed them to me during a family gift exchange. And then I, I was, I was, it was implied that I must open them in front of everybody. And again, they were, they were wrapped in a, in a, in a, target bag. Unrelated, Kimmy and her mother are now estranged. Those are our three stories. <laughs> Those are our three stories. And at this point, I would love to, um, wait, what? Oh, wait, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of an update. The candles and the sweatshirt are sold out. The candles and the sweatshirt are sold out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that. That is so cool. That is so wonderful. You just made a small business's day. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Also, Lindsay, who runs Still Kickin', who does like all of the TTFA merch, was like, I hope I get one. I hope I get one. Because guess what? When I run the ship, no one gets a deal, including me. I have to buy this stuff. Sometimes I don't even get it. I'm like, oh, and they'll be like, yeah, it was sold out. Sorry, you didn't get it. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. We're, so we're ready for the vote. We're ready for the vote. At this point, I desperately need everybody to, to vote. Okay, our three choices are Kahlua and Black Stallion Candle vitamins and disappointment <laughs> or third mom's panties who will win who will win this set of open but unused playing cards who will win the shutterfly gift card guys who is going to win oh my god oh my god oh, keep voting keep voting keep voting right now mom's pan panties are a runaway winner but that could change that could change the game is still winning we're gonna call it it's mom's panties kimmy kimmy Hannah is going to email you and you are going to get uh, something better than your mother's used panties this Christmas. So 
Thank you. Thank you for everybody. I do fully understand, um, guys, that we are, we're over time. We're over time. But also, like, what's time? Okay, what's time? I will stay as long as you want to. Sonia is on East Coast time, so this will suck for her. But Sonia, are you okay right now? Okay, can you can you come on, tell everybody, are you okay? Are you being held hostage by this this host who is uh, has ADHD and is a bad time manager? Are you okay? Uh, I am doing great. Um, okay. The tech the tech gods are not with us today, but the show is mm, going that's great. Okay. That's can you okay. see these okay. comments? Why don't we pull some people's comments in? Yeah. I haven't seen any comments. I would love to see comments. Can you though. see that? I just put a comment one. there for you. There you go. Let's talk to let's talk to the people. They oh, want to hear from you. God, it's better than an old school man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anaya. Um, <laughs> reading comments, reading comments. Also, if you're wondering, like, why is it so quiet? Where's Nora's family? They were banished from the home. This is what you need. Guess what, Sarah? I will stay literally all night okay all night long like lionel richie which actually all night long like till you know i mean honestly a reasonable hour it's but it's only 7 30 my time which means 9 30 is sunday's time which means i think we're okay the point is that i think we're okay and when i do live shows people who have been to my live show know this too also the poor people who work at theaters understand this too i'm like it'll last as long as it lasts okay it'll last as long as it lasts and also i stay I stay forever afterwards. I stay forever. So even when the show's over, I will stay and I will like answer your comments and questions and, and things like that. So we're going to do a quick, um, we've got like, honestly, we've only, it's all, it's almost done. It's almost done. Um, we're going to talk about holiday stories right now. Um, every family has them. Every family has a holiday story. I mean, w you know, one year, uh, my mother, again, amazing woman, we, we adore her. She cooked lamb and turkey in the same pan. I thought my dad was going to divorce her. He did not. But one time I was ready to file for emancipation because it was Thanksgiving and she and my aunt and their friends were like, just like it, a little too in the holiday spirit. And we didn't eat dinner till 930. And then when we got the mashed potatoes, truly the only like decent thing about a Thanksgiving meal, there were beets blended into them. There were beets blended it into the mashed potatoes. It looked like we were eating a bowl of, it was not good. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. Still not over it. Uh, you know, mom, we can go to therapy. We can work that stuff out. And who could forget every year that my little brother ruined our Christmas photo every single year, every single year. Look at this kid. Look at pouting. Look at him. Look at him. Pouting. Look at him. Hiding behind a chair and pouting. Okay every single year look at that's that's him that's him zoom in we're gonna need to zoom in where is he he's on the ground hiding from the camera again he grew up to be an amazing wonderful human but come on dude come on so i asked for your best worst holiday stories and i i, I want to tell them um with the help of our producer and my friend marcel melikibu marcel are you here uh yeah i'm here what's up Nora? he's here he's here one thank you for uh thank you for um connecting me with um with my with my sliding doors moment uh earlier in the evening really great appreciate it <laughs> yeah thank you for uh allowing me to do that you know <laughs> Okay, so I got these, I got a few stories from our listeners about their, like, their best worst holiday story, and I want to tell them to you because I want to see if I can make you laugh because nothing makes you laugh. Okay. All I just right. don't make you laugh, at least, and I'm... No. That's the goal. Sometimes, that's the goal sometimes. Today. Okay. You make me laugh sometimes. This is the goal for tonight. We're going to make Marcel laugh. Um, also, Sonny, you can pull in comments anytime. I would love to see them. Okay. So this one is from Penley, which is already a fancy name. You hear the name Penley. I mean, I don't know about you, Marcel. I hear the name Penley. I'm like, oh, someone, someone's having Alexis December to remember. That is okay. Penley, Penley involves wealth transfer. <laughs> if, you're, if your name is Penley, you are not celebrating Honda days. You are. No, 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 no you're no. not in a Honda. No. No, you are, you're not, it's not a Honda. It's not a Honda, it's not a Toyota then. Okay, so this from Penley. I invited my Jewish boyfriend home to experience a real New England Christmas. And my sister was being yes. a real pill on Christmas day. Oh shit. A real pill, Marcel. That's something white people say. <laughs> a pill is crazy. 
<laughs> a pill is actually really crazy to to call somebody. But go on, go on. If if somebody calls you a real pill, it's like that is a whoo. That's a. You are not a placebo. It is a real thing. <laughs> you <are not. laughs> you, you might get hooked. You might lose your eyesight. Your 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 right pinky may go numb. It may go numb. If you are a real pill, there are side effects, and this is one. So Padley, her sister's being a real pill, also known as a, uh, and so she's like, fine, I will take my eleven year old nephew sledding just to get out of the house. So they go sledding. She flips her sled on the side of the hill and ends up vomiting into the snow. <laughs> Um, oh shit! Yeah, and it's bad. It's bad. So they have to end. They end up having to call an ambulance, and they go to the hospital. Her parents come to the hospital. Her boyfriend comes to the hospital. It turns out um, that she ruptured her spleen. Oh, <laughs> like, do you know what a spleen is? What I do not know what a spleen is. What does is. it do? What does I, it do? I, I'm pretty sure it like cleanses something. So I'm pretty sure it's some shit you need in your body and not to rupture. <laughs> I'm pretty it. sure death no. is 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 it imminent? Is that the word? It it can't. Are there any doctors in the house? Can anybody tell us what a spleen does and if it's important? <laughs> Please. I don't know. It looks important. Filters blood. Image? Okay, Michelle told us that it filters blood. That seems extremely important. So Penley's important. Uh, Penley's spleen is ruptured. Like, oh my god, the body has so many ways to like filter things. Amazing organs, nature's filters. So she's in the hospital and the anesthesiologist asks her, like, are you on any other drugs? And before her boyfriend, who is, you know, not on death's doorstep can stop her. She looks at the, at the surgeon and the anesthesiologist and is like, yeah, we smoked pot last night. <laughs> As they should. As they like, should. The anesthesiologist like, I'm really just looking for like, drug interactions but but thank you so obviously the neurologist does the anesthesia they don't care about this stuff and so that is awkward but it's worse because her parents are right there and maybe i don't know how her parents feel about smoking pot but the night before penley her boyfriend who her parents have have not spent any time with yet and her siblings they all tell their parents that they will meet them at church but mm. they don't because mm. they're too stoned <laughs> Yo, sometimes you just need to take a break. That's all it is. Sometimes you need a break, you know? It's like we're all adults, man. Listen, these these all sound like tax paying citizens to me. So, so, so you you paid your taxes, you know, ain't nothing wrong with getting a little bit of, you know, herb in the system and and feeling <gasps> a little extra good. Oh my god. So <laughs> she she has to say like she's, you know, telling the anesthesiologist this and is basically like confessing to her parents like yeah i'm sorry i, I sorry i told you i'd meet you at church and then didn't show up but i was i was i was smoking weed with my um with my siblings and then lying to you anyways my spleen ruptured you can't be mad mm. at me i might die so she ends up staying in the hospital for several days <laughs> and her boyfriend <laughs> who's never had a christmas before is just stuck <laughs> with this family <laughs> That like, he oh, doesn't this is know. what Christmas is? Like, shit. Imagine that being you. I'd be scared. He's probably traumatized now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, they got married. Oh. They got, they got married. They got married. Okay. He was like, he was like, okay, I guess this is, which I think is actually probably a good sign because if you can get through something if you can get through the very worst christmas right away then like a christmas right. where like you know I, I don't know like people always have mother-in-law problems i don't i have two amazing mothers-in-law sorry everybody can't relate but like you know, then you can get through like you know i don't know, just like the typical sort of like inter-family things because you can be like well there was that christmas where penley almost died after a sledding accident after getting Listen, high and skipping church you, you gotta you gotta see your significant other at their worst that's you how you that's how you build the deepest bonds is I want to see you vomiting. I want to see you, you know, defecate, you know, somewhere that you shouldn't. Uh, I want to see you in the hospital, <laughs> spit drooling out of your mouth, uncertain of the future. That's what that's who I want to see. I don't want to see you all nice and well dressed and showered. 
<laughs> at your uh, worst. At your worst. So they made it. They made it, which I love. Okay, so again, everybody remember we are voting on winners slash losers. Like whoever gets the most votes, they're also going to win a Shutterfly gift card. They're also going to win. Oh, they're going to win this old trophy that I found. <laughs> Marcel, this is from. Um, stop reading your text. This is from. I'm I'm <laughs> look. I'm in the script. I'm, oh, I'm looking. Oh, got it. Got it. Got I it, have it, it here because if I pull it up here, it yeah. Looks well, crazy. I know. I know we're two hours late. I know that we've been doing this for almost two hours. I know it. Okay, I know it. It's my it's my fault um okay so the the winner or loser is going to get this do do you recognize this anybody this is one of the first uh this is from like one of our first live shows and we did a uh a bummer award and so mm. when you get it in the mail it will say 2018 um but you'll know in your heart that it's from 2020 <laughs> okay <laughs> You're re-gifting a, a I, bummer. I'm re-gifting an extra trophy from somebody who did not claim it at one of our other other shows. Okay. And that is <laughs> that is mine. Okay. So this this story is from Jen. Also, I am I am um understanding from the comments, Marcel, that like the, the women watching this, they like how you look and they think this is a perfect time to just level set and tell people Marcel oh. is 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 partnered up. I mean, okay. it, it's still nothing. I mean, you can shoot your shot. Okay. I mean, it doesn't mean you're gonna make it, but there's uh, nothing wrong. I'm sure the rim likes, you know, shots to be shot or whatever. You know, go ahead, shoot your shot. Marcel is is like very, very. I mean, he's not he's not just a pretty face. He's also just like very smart and and talented and kind. It's just a terrible combination. And because there's just like there's just not enough like there just aren't way to take a, a big segue. But everybody who knows me knows ADHD will uh, just creep in and do its thing. How many women do you know who are like great? And then you know like three good dudes and they're always like taken. And then you're like, but I know all these other really great ladies. Anyways, we won't get into that, but I will. I do kind of want to do a live show where I where I basically match make people. Oh shit. Well, stay tuned for that. I that is I I'm a meddler. I love to meddle. I love to match make and something else that starts with an M. I don't know what. Okay. I don't know what. So okay, this this story is from Jen. Okay. To set the scene. Um, Jen uh, is 26 years old when this story takes place. She lives in uh, the Midwest and she is unmarried. That will mean okay. something to some people, right? 26 year old woman, unmarried. Her brother's married, her parents are married. Everybody's married except Jen. Her mother is also a very intense Christmas gift giver. Okay, because when Jen was little, yeah, she would like peek at presents and then cl close them up again, you know, because they were labeled mm. Jen. And so her mom came up with this system. It's amazing. Marcel, where basically uh, on Christmas morning, she would come out with a sealed envelope, <laughs> like it's the Oscars. Okay. <laughs> Open up and have like, you know, a yellow legal pad gift key. Like she would pull out the legal mm. pad. And then read from it. And she liked to like build up the drama to be like, she wanted to save the best gift for last. So like the whole morning is like, okay, Jen, will you hand your brother gift C3? Thank you. So all oh, morning, shit. you know, all morning, she's like hyping up this gift, hyping up this gift to Jen. And um, meanwhile, like it's her brother and his wife, her parents. And then it's Jen like alone in a chair on the other side of the room <laughs> yo that image is so wow that's tragic that's tough so she's just like that's out on the outskirts and her mom but her mom keeps like hyping up this gift to her, her mom keeps hyping like oh my god jen this is this is the greatest gift you can use it on new year's eve it's going to compliment mm. you so well you'll be able to take it along to like all of your parties and so jen even though like you know it's not the greatest christmas day she's starting to get like really excited about this she's starting to get like you know okay. oh my god is i hope it's my turn i hope it's my turn so finally it's time for her best gift. Like, and her mom is like, you know, here it is. Jen, Jen opens it. She opens it. She opens it. And she's like, oh my God. Leaves, tries to like run to the kitchen, tries to find a place to hide, except she lives in a 1970s ranch home. There is nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to hide. Marcel, I am telling you this story mm. from a ranch home where I can see every room in my house right now. Like there's nowhere to go. No type go. of privacy. 
no type of privacy. Do you want to know what this gift was? <laughs> what was the gift? Yeah, you're, the suspense is killing me now. Okay. What is it? What is it? It was a Mr. Wonderful talking doll, which is basically a Billy Big Mouth bass, but like for for women. Like it's basically like a package wow. of misogyny. So who's is- dream guy? <laughs> Yo, my man's boots. What? Yo, what is he? Oh, Lord Jesus. Look at that man's feet. That's like, that's tough. He Yeah, he looks like the lazy town character. <laughs> he looks like a like a bootleg 60s Superman. He looks that like a rejected Land's End model. <laughs> like. Yo, the shirt is nice, though. What are those like, dockers? He's definitely wearing, he's wearing pleated dockers. He's wearing pleated dockers. And so, you know, Billy, like, <laughs> wow. Billy Big Mouth. Yo, look at the feet. Sharon no, is I'm crying. Still, Sharon is feet. crying. This, the feet. Oh, the shit. Feet. But beyond just the feet, Sharon, please notice that, like, he has no legs. <laughs> please notice that <laughs> when. <laughs> those are his knees. Just those are yeah. Knees. He's a pair of knees. He's he's a pair. Of, he's a pair of this knees, is, is, and he's got you know. I mean, he's got he's got he's got just. I mean, he does have he does have that real swoopy hair, which is you know that was a look at the time. But here's what this doll does. Um, this is like you know this is like a, a novelty gift that you would find at like a drugstore, and mm. when you pull the string, and Marcel says things like, "Uh, we should talk about our feelings," like. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Well, like, I mean, at least he does something, you know, serves a function. He serves a function. He serves a function, which is like to play into like every stereotype. Like women, they just want to talk about their feelings. <laughs> like, I mean, like, look sure. at the guy, you know, like who wouldn't want Mr. Who wouldn't want like Who wouldn't want like a 16 inch doll to like uh, tell them like, we should cuddle tonight. Um, Wait, that thing is 16 inches? I mean, I'm just assuming. I don't, I'm, I'm terrible at, I, but you know, it's not even like a life size doll, which like I could see it being funny if it was like a doll that you could put in the carpool in the in your. <laughs> they said you look like Bob Saget. Stacy, stop it, please! Oh my god! Yo, Bob Saget is crazy. You mean the Full House dude? <laughs> the Full House dude. Wow! And he got the slick perm too. He, That's he that Murray's that. grease. He's just kind of like those hands, like just a, hey, yeah, it just, it's a problematic doll, but you know, it's, this is what Jen's mom said she could bring to New Year's Eve mm. yeah, and take to all of her parties as a 26 year old single woman in the Midwest. So those are, our, mm-hmm. those are our, yeah. What's she going to do? What's she going to do? Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's not, uh. It's 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 not good. So those are the stories that I had um, that I okay. picked from from all the emails that we got. Well, so. actually, Nora, you know, I picked a story um, and, and there's, there's one more uh, and I think you'll appreciate it. OK, okay? this one okay. Uh, that you specifically one of my teachers, one of my high school teachers used to always say that when we get in trouble, he'd be like, Marcel, you'd appreciate. And then you, you'd have to look up, you know, I'm. <laughs> I'm like playing a Game Boy or something. You know, I probably had been smoking weed or something before getting into class. It was just tough. And so I would look up and like my whole body would jerk. Uh, and then he'd be like, you can't swing a cat without doing a math problem. And everything was about swinging a cat. Uh, anyway, so this this comes in from Caroline. Uh, I'm not going to try to say your last name, but Caroline K. And Caroline writes, my grandmother has the most beautiful home. Mm-hmm. And that that's beautiful alone just because I, you know, grandmothers always have the most beautiful homes. It's they true. have uh uh my, my grandma she had like a like an old school teapot. It was ceramic and I thought you could heat it up on the stove, but apparently <laughs> you're just supposed to put the hot water in it. Um one less teapot. Uh <laughs> I aspire to have the same level of creativity elegance and warmth in my abode someday and that's what i've been on i've been trying to get my seasoning up you know as you get old you get more seasoned there's flavor going on she even has a fabulous yellow sofa in the formal living room i do love that 
I love that. Do you do you have a formal living room? No, we have a living room that's also a kitchen, that's also a dining room, and I mean, my my dog is giving herself yeah, basically house. like a full exam on the couch, so it's not, not a formal living room. Yeah, she informal. should. This is America. Yeah. This is America. Let her live her life. One Christmas, I made the trip from Chicago to Detroit to be with her and my family. I blocked it out. So I don't remember if I took the hell portal of, of the mega bus <laughs> or the almost as bad Amtrak train. I'm gonna let you know right now, the Amtrak is only good if you get like the, the multi thousand dollar room with the bed in it. So I would have just thugged it out on the mega bus. You pay that $30 and you're straight. One time on a bus trip, um, <laughs> the bathroom was broken and the bus driver who would not stop he was like no we have to make time it was oh, like shit. me people were losing their minds. and on another bus trip that's on the windshield fell out <laughs> yo just creating just, a cesspool just a cesspool it, it just fell out and we we're all like oh whoosh <laughs> like wafting wafting uh, Okay, so she takes the mega bus. Okay, so she she yeah, instead of the Amtrak train. Okay, so but one of those oh, Cecilia, one of those the mega bus does not go anywhere good. It goes to a lot of good places. Just you have to enjoy the journey, and the journey will be fragrant, and the journey yeah. will be <laughs> breathe. You know, it just got to be one of those memes that just says breathe with a period at the end. Just breathe. So. <laughs> One of those places I caught a bug, a stomach bug. <laughs> I never get the kind where I puke. Oh, shit. You know, when somebody tells you they never get the kind and it's and it's a bad outcome like puking. OK, it, then, you know, something worse is about to happen. <laughs> oh, hold on, let's pull that down. This was no exception. I had the runs and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I I know I know I've like read this before, but looking at the word runs is so crazy. It's so crazy to me. The runs is so crazy. <laughs> and bad. My god, Marcel. <laughs> my four year old called it <laughs> called it <laughs> butt puke. <laughs> Oh no, 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 he didn't. No, you didn't. He said, Come I, had, on, I had butt puke today. <laughs> oh, buddy. Sound like a machine gun coming out. Just brrr, pow, pow, pow. Lord, jeez. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, I this missed... is a great story. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. I missed all my favorite activities <laughs> stuck in the bed or the bathroom. That's what really messed me up because I was like, okay, the, the bathroom makes sense, but why are you in between the, the bath and the bed? You know, you got to choose yeah. one, especially if you yeah. have the runs. That bedroom <laughs> probably, you're going to destroy them sheets. Okay. My mom and sister stole a cloth napkin from the, <laughs> from the super fancy plate. Oh man, and usually those are made out of a hundred percent cotton, I think. So that's, <laughs> that's a hundred percent cotton right there. It is. So uh not not like the uh poly cotton poly blend that those happiest holiday sweaters. No, are. no, no, no. Uh they ate <laughs> oh god. Oh wait, hold on. They stole a cloth napkin from the super fancy plate. They ate dinner on Christmas <laughs> Eve to <laughs> to smuggle me out a chocolate covered strawberry. Wow, isn't that ironic? Something else is about to be chocolate covered. But Christmas morning, I felt much better. <laughs> we all gathered on and around the yellow couch to see what was in our stockings. For some reason, I was wearing white leggings. Oh, this is where it's about to get dark. Oh, God. No, no one <laughs> should ever wear. Who has the confidence to wear white leggings? It's too. <laughs> Yo, you, you're making a statement wearing them white leggings. And especially what's about to go down. You know, this. she just didn't know. It's okay. Caroline didn't know. She didn't know. Sometimes, you know, you stun out. I, I've worn white jeans, 
like once, you know, you buy them, you wear them once, but I never had nothing like this happen though. God damn. Uh, I was wearing white leggings an inexplicably bold choice considering why I was in the bed the past two days. Seriously, Carol. So you made this decision though. I, I can't say I, you know, I ain't got too much pity for you because you made this choice consciously. Uh, and we were all sitting on the yellow couch together, the whole family. And a fart came. <laughs> Yo, this is so crazy. I thought I was being smart by letting it out when we were all <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Yo, that's real though, because when you're all busting up laughing and it gets down to your stomach and you try to like push the air out, I feel you. That I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Only it wasn't a fart. Oh, oh, see, I can't even laugh at that. That's just... <sighs> I can't remember how I left the room because I blacked out. Those white leggings never returned to my closet. But then after changing, I had to go back down and see if anything leaked onto the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that that walk down, back down, has to be one of the most... Uh, it, heart-wrenching is not the word. What's the word? It, it has to be good. one of the most fear... Fear and... I don't know what word. Fear-inducing... Yeah, uh, experiences. It's, yeah, you're about to. You're about to. Had. Oh God. Oh yeah, walk of shark shame. <laughs> Yo, when people used to say shark, I didn't think that was a real thing. <laughs> but you know, as you age, you know, people have experiences. Yeah. You kind of people figure do. it out a little, little people bit of do. a streak here and there. This was not a streak. This was a full on flow. <laughs> Somehow, some way, there was nothing. Oh my God. Read the comment from Janelle. Oh, hold on. Let me see this. <laughs> I sharded myself while in a shopping mall while wearing white pants. See, this is this is why, in all seriousness, y'all need to really check yourselves on wearing these white pants. You think you're doing something. No. You felt something when you when you left the house. You knew something was up with your stomach. Don't act like this just came on. You ate something weird. You 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 did something. You did something, you oh knew something, God. and you chose to go out there with that with those white pants. And just so you know, yep. it's not only your shame, it's not only your trauma, everyone else around you feels that for you. <laughs> Never trust a fart. <laughs> Never trust a fart is really crazy. <laughs> oh my God, my ribs hurt. My ribs really hurt. That hurt. Well, I mean, somehow, some way, oh. there was nothing. It was a Christmas miracle. That and, is, uh, you know, that's so. That's a Christmas miracle. That's a Christmas I think, miracle. Can I you think see this was, little guy, Marcel? Is that the turtle cuteness? Yeah, that's cuteness. Look at him. Oh, wow. He just that's, did his little that's... stretch where he sticks his neck all the way. Ooh, shy, shy guy. Okay, so we have to do the vote. We have to, we have to, we have to, somebody, there's got to be a winner. There's got to be a loser. Okay, that's what this comes down to. So, yep. Sonia, we are ready to tally the votes. Who is going to win? Who is going to win? Is it is it bursting a spleen? Is it mansplaining? Is it white leggings? Is it Mr. Wonderful? Okay, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Oh, God, it's... it's, it's yeah, really I don't know, man. I just got to be real, man. If, if it's not white leggings, I'm going to be shocked. Oh my God. I sharded myself in my private office at work and had to sneak out to go home to change and sneak back before anyone noticed I was gone. Okay, but what did you do when you switched clothing? Like, did no one notice that you changed your your pants or your whatever People you People are wearing? extremely extreme. Okay, we are, we are voting, we're voting. Okay, we're done. White leggings won, white leggings won. I mm. almost, you know, I think Man's it, white. I think it, I think it had to do not just with the sharding, but with your delivery. You're very talented, that Marcel. You're very talented. Also, I like that you're wearing the 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 terrible things for asking uh, bomber jacket. You want to describe that to people? You want to describe that? Uh, I am wearing a black jacket that says terrible on it. But what's the material like? I don't. I mean, it's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know words. Like if you want one of those, that's going to be tough. But I'll tell you this much. It feels comfortable. Uh, it uh, it is. Uh, 
It's like sweatshirt material. It's like fluffy. Yeah, it feels like a sweater, like one of those nice, you know, like Hanes ones that you get uh, during the holidays from your mom or something like that. Snaps. Yeah. The full on, you know. So it feels really good. It's it's warm. I'll tell you that. I run hot, so I can go outside in frigid weather, and this is perfect. So. We are sold out of our uh, our happyish holidays Christmas sweaters, but we still have all of our terrible things for asking merch, which is also designed by Gigi, which is also uh, fulfilled by Still Kickin, which also still supports small business. Uh, at ttfamerch.com, you can buy the hoodie here at happyishholidays.com tonight. It's a great gift for yourself. Okay, Marcel's got the bomber jacket. I also I had the bomber jacket as an option tonight, but then I sat on it and I forgot it was here. And I love it. Sweatshirt material snaps up the front. It's really great. Um, we did a two-hour show instead of a one-hour show. I don't know who. I think I I view that as a bonus. Okay, I view, I personally view that as a bonus for everybody. I hope you do too. Uh, I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. However you are, whoever you are, wherever you are, I know that everybody has had a heck of a year, okay? We've had hard years before. This was a real doozy. Not to use too strong of language. It was a tough one. It was hard. And also, we're here. We got to spend this time with each other. We know that even in the worst of years, there are still good days, and I hope that with the help of Shutterfly and with the help of Stage 10, we were able to give you one of those good times this evening. It means a lot to me to be able to do this. It means a lot to me to be able to, um, I don't know, to, to still make this show four years later. Uh, so there are a lot of people to thank, but I do want you all to know that the official programming at this point is done. We are done with all of our segments. I am done handing out prizes. I have run out of things around my house to to promise to mail you. And so at this portion of 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 the evening, we're just going to hang out. I'm going to we're going to end this live stream in a in a couple minutes, but if you will come back, we'll refresh and I will be able to like read your comments and reply to them and we can do a Q&A. We can hang out, we can do whatever and uh and we will be back. So just so you know, that's happening in a couple minutes, but I do wanna say some thank yous. I wanna thank everybody at Stage 10 who helped make this happen. Can Sonia come back on? Do you know how much work she did? Do you understand how, how hard Sonia worked to pull this all together? Where's Crystal? Look at her. Uh, okay. Let's bring Crystal back. Let's bring Crystal back. Sonia has all the power. She can bring back literally everybody. Just, just, she's just playing Misha. God at this point. I can't bring back ah, Misha. We can't Misha bring can't back come Misha. back. Um, but I want to thank everybody at Stage 10 who did this. I want to thank everybody at Terrible Thanks for Asking. Hannah Meacock Ross, Jordan Turgeon, Tom DiNapoli, Lily Kim, Marcel Malikubu, Jacob Maldonado Medina, uh, Christina Lopez, Phyllis Fletcher, Tracy Mumford. I'm literally just naming like everybody I've ever worked with at this point, but I think that's the right thing to do, okay? I really do. Um, and I really want to thank Shutterfly for being a good partner to us. It is so wonderful to know that uh, there are so many other people out there who know that, uh, that there is value in recognizing the moment that we are in. And there is value in still finding time to connect and be together even when things are really really hard so um i think that there is there's a link somewhere i think it's just shutterfly.com i think you just go to their website order yourself some some holiday cards okay it is my goal my absolute goal this will be the year 2020 even though the whole world is falling apart this will be the year that i get cards out before the new year you heard it here first i want you all to hold me accountable this is the year that it's happening thank you everybody for showing up tonight if you listen to terrible thanks for asking if this is your first exposure to it i am so sorry what a weird night for you um but it is truly the honor of a lifetime to get to make this show with and for you. So thank you for being here and have a happyish holiday to you and yours. Good night. <laughs>